Hi, this is Richard Pears of Finextra TV, and I'm joined today uh, by Anna, who's partner and architect at FinTech Legal Labs. Uh, we have Anna Maria Slot, who's the uh, uh, Ashurst, the Global Environment, Social and Governance Partner, and Sarah De La Torre, Director of Financial Services and Digital Solutions at HIPTA. Uh, hello, everybody. Hi. Hello. Hello. I'm excited to have you here today and also because, Sarah, you and I met at the very first SustainableFinance.Live workshop and I was sitting there naively thinking that these things might help good things happen and goodness gracious, here we are. Um, how did that thing, that little workshop, help shape what we've got today in any small way? Well, it was, it was a fantastic initiative because it really mixed uh, people from different backgrounds together. So it was the financial institutions, the technologies, the fintech startups and all of the innovators, as well as the sustainability leads and experts getting together with a blank canvas to really assess how we could make a difference by working together. Uh, so I thought the format was excellent and, I, and it definitely was very inspiring and very timely considering that we were also having these conversations in parallel with us as and and somehow the industry is aligning and was aligning already from that time uh, to really think about ways in which we could together handle the transition to to green and green finance. Brilliant well let's hear more about your your initiative today. Um, Abhidat tell us first of all a little bit more about the labs you know what are you already sure. doing and how does this fit into it okay well thank you very much richard uh, it's a pleasure to be with everyone here um the labs was really uh, started as a result of demand from two sides uh, one fintech companies that need support on legal issues and and fintech is a very legally intensive area of technology because you're dealing with consumers and investors and that's highly regulated and a lot of these companies don't have the resource necessarily to get the benefit of a large firms like our support across the spectrum. There was that demand. And then also we had demand by our institutional clients who are very interested in connecting with cutting edge companies coming up with technology. So we developed a lab program where companies apply. And if they're high quality companies, we let them in. They get access to our best lawyers in the initial phase of the lab in relevant areas of law. And it's a broad spectrum of areas. We, we don't just focus it on one. So we do have reg, we, do, we have capital markets, corporate, IP, tax, et cetera. And they get that support over a period of time. And then they have a, <clears throat> we have a big demo day where we get influencers from around the world to come and present. And the companies have an opportunity to present themselves to investors and institutional clients and others that are interested in helping them accelerate their business. We don't charge anyone any money or take any equity in their business. For us, it's about putting quality together with quality. That's how we enhance our relationship in the market. Fantastic. That, and, and I know that kind of format very well from that whole fintech era. And it's just incredibly valuable. And I think, uh, you know, this is in the sustainability front. This is this must be one of the first ones coming into into London. Sarah, Tara, tell us a bit more about the role of uh, Hitachi in all of this. Well, Hitachi as a Japanese business is, is heavily involved in sustainability and, and leveraging technology to make a difference. Uh, we are not just a technology company, but also a manufacturing and logistics business. So it's, it is quite natural for us to naturally evolve into the current engagements. So, so our values are intrinsically led by sustainability, changing society, achieving projects that make not just um, economic sense, but also make a social difference. So, so of course, this aligns really well. And, and it is a mandate that we have across the entire group to be able to promote that. As part of financial services, my goal is to look at how we can align these amazing goals and principles to our customers, the financial institutions, and also the wider ecosystem. So how we work with partners like Ashurst and how we can make a difference and operate in a slightly different way to traditional pure digital transformation, digital solutions firms. Okay, that and that's uh, really important. I think Anna Maria, particularly looking at the sustainability with uh, a legal lens is, is super important. Tell us a bit more about your perspective on this. 
Yeah, no, thanks, Richard. Uh, definitely. And and I think people often get a little bit confused about why lawyers would be talking about sustainability. Um, but it, but in actual fact, you know, it, it is this transformation that Sarah's talking about, this, this kind of holistic looking at everything that we're doing and, and how do we do that differently. And, in, and to do that, you, you need innovation, but you also need the legal frameworks in place so that people can, can build and develop their businesses in a way that complies with regs, where you can access the finance markets, you know, where you're, you're, you're set up for, for success, as it were. Yeah, and a lot of this is sort of coming, I suppose, at one level from the uh, the regulatory, the EU uh, taxonomy and sustainable finance initiative and so forth. So there's a sort of a drive coming that people might not be focused on right now. And then there's actually interpretation and uh, and then people kind of going, well, what have I got to do with regard to my fiduciary responsibility? How do you kind of uh, help clients through the interpretation of what they need to do, how it fits with their current responsibilities. Yeah, no, there's a there's a lot in that question and and a lot of aspects to it. Um, I think, as you said, b- people weren't entirely focused on on what was happening in the EU, but the EU is definitely committed to kind of um, restructuring the finance world so that it is is focused on sustainable finance, whether that's through the EU taxonomy. Or the Green Deal, or, or in other ways, the EU is definitely committed to this at the highest levels. Um, what that means for us in, in, in the legal world and the way that we help our clients is that we need to help them navigate through all of these various um, regulations that are coming out, and also coming out kind of in real time with with you know with with moving targets and and not entirely clear instruction. I mean, obviously, sustainable finance from its kind of commercial adoption in sort of 2014 has been a bit amorphous. You know, nobody really knows what was green and what do you mean by green and all of that. The EU taxonomy is trying to 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 really kind of put a framework around that so that you can tell what people mean when they say various words. But that's a very complicated process. And so for what for example, one of the things that we've done is put together a product called ESG Ready. Which is a it's a digital product, which uh, which is very cool. Um, not a lot of lawyers like digital, but uh, where where companies that are regulated can go in and assess how they're doing against the EU taxonomy, and so that's a framework that allows us to scale that influence, right? Because lots and lots and lots of companies are going to have this need, and you know there's there's only so many hours in the day, but this way people can go in. And, and work on it backed up by our legal support. Wow, that's going to be great. That'd be good to sort of get a link when that's available out to people, I'm sure. Um, Sarah, one of the things you, you you spoke about, and I know that Hitachi is very strong on, you know, I was, I was in a conversation today with one of the big sustainability data providers, and they were talking about, um, you know, emissions and the fact that in the sort of scope three space, scope two space, it's there's no real pressure to actually uh, uh, give this information and it's not very available. I mean, you guys are obviously looking, as you said, down supply chains, you're strong in IoT and sensor type tech. You know, do you do you feel that in addition to, to your digital transformation skills that you spoke about, that all of that competency and value is gonna help on that end of the, of the challenge? Absolutely. Uh, at some point, there is going to be a convergence between um, what is pure finance and what is sustainability and what is supply chain. And it is where the complexity lies. It is the combination of domains that makes it harder. But it's also an opportunity to effectively leverage the value of organizations that have that experience. So, so if you look at some of um, the initiatives that we have around CO2 reduction and so forth, we we you may have seen in the news uh, our commitment to sustainability sustainability through electric vehicles in the UK with a really large program around optimized prime for vehicles uh, um, around sustainability and and, 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 and in, when it comes to green finance and, and funding and loans. So, so all of these things are combining all of our assets, including the IoT element alongside with the rest of the exponential technologies. And I think that's where the difference is as well. We're looking back, uh, we're looking at a time where technology 
really make a difference in a way that was not possible before, which is why perhaps, although we had a green awareness, we didn't have the means to be able to demonstrate that with transparency. And it is now when we can really accelerate that by using and leveraging those technologies with the right domain knowledge and the right um, expertise in place. So, yeah. so it is a fantastic time to be able to combine all of that. And, and, and your event showed that. It showed how all of those different skill sets, when you put them together, you can actually do really great things like we did in those workshops. Well, yeah, and I think the inspiration was that whole fintech journey that we all went on, you know, in terms of bringing people together. Abhidat, when, you, when you've when you got your labs there, and, and obviously you've, you've had previous cohorts, um, you know, you're working with, again, I, I'm sure multidisciplinary groups, you're helping uh, mentoring, etc. Do you also provide sort of, you know, in, infrastructure, data sets and, you know, how does your kind of modus operandi work to help those uh, founders? Well, primarily we, we try and support them on the legal side and um, to help them on their sort of legal issues, but also we put them in contact with a lot of good partners and institutions that join the lab as partners, particularly on Demo Day, and they continue with that engagement. So a classic example is Hitachi's engagement with a couple of our cohort companies that Sarah can talk about, uh, if she can, um, where you know we had some excellent companies come through, um, one of them particularly with an excellent sustainability focus that uh, Hitachi then engaged with and is continuing to engage with. Sarah, give us an idea who that is. Absolutely. Um, I'm very happy to to mention that. So, so one of the uh, uh, fintech firms or, or green tech firms that um, that Ashurst is working with is is a firm called Qvan. Q -Van, Q -V -A -N. It, it's actually a a startup firm that was quite impressive uh, to me, particularly because what I think they have is. In a, in a way ahead of time, I think that we will see that becoming more relevant. Effectively, they have an entire platform that is able to uh, act as a portfolio management tool for green related fund, uh, funds and projects. So it's effectively connecting the fund managers as well as the investors to be able to effectively track the performance of their sustainability led projects and effectively put together all of the data sources and all of the models um, in bespoke basis. So every organization, every fund, every fund manager will have a different approach, but effect effectively it's giving a platform that is ready to go without having to re-implement anything and without having to rely purely on, on, on data sheets, which is what at the moment a number of organizations have in place. So there is an awareness that data and, and ESG ratings and scoring systems need to be in place, but there isn't effectively a mechanism that is there readily available as a kind of container to effectively display, display with transparency the whole performance of the fund. And this is what they have, and we are effectively looking to introduce them to one of our uh, customers and create an ecosystem in a particular European market, which should be very interesting uh, to fast track the role of uh, green finance, particularly in asset management, where I think there is a significant awareness of it driven by the investors uh, requirement. Yeah, really interesting to hear about that. And certainly I see that uh, demand in the market. So we'll, we'll have to uh, get a bit more information and try and showcase those those guys, but yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, there are so many elements of the uh, of extended ecosystems from supply chain that we've spoken about all the way through buy side, sell side, um, and then just the tools that are in place to help monitor and track uh, that, that um, lots of re new invention needed here, which is obviously what the lab's all about. So let's let's kind of wrap it up in the sense of perhaps, you know, if everybody wants to give me a sense for, you know, what you hope for and, you know, how, also people get involved with you to get involved in the lab. Um, maybe if I start with you, uh, Abradad, if that's all right. Sure, Richard, thank you. So um, the lab formally opened three weeks ago uh, for applications and we have, we're have we almost close to 70 applicants in such a short space of time, and um, which is great, which, which basically confirms that, you know, there's been a lot of companies, and that must be mainly word of mouth as opposed to, because we don't really advertise it that much other than sending a few emails and a few social media posts. So we're very happy about that. We, we hope more engagement this year. Well, there's also a sustainability stream, a formal one. We had a number of companies that were in the ESG space last year, and Anna Marie and Sarah 
engage with them. But this year we're having a more formal sustainability stream as part of the program. And we, we hope that that's a successful stream, which I have no doubt it will be. Yeah, Marie. Sure. Um, thanks, Richard. And I think just to add to that, I mean, sustainability and the challenges that these things bring is is really, it, it is a whole new way of looking at things and a way of approaching business. And so I think in particular, the, the labs give companies that are really trying to come at things with innovative new ideas uh, a, a great basis. And I'm really excited about the sustainability stream for, for the labs this year, because we need to think about how we do things that we need to kind of unpack everything that we do and look at it again and take into consideration the externalities that previously we had not considered in how, you know, in how we build and how we make and how we consume. And so this, this is a, you know, I, I'm super excited about this and particularly what Hitachi brings to, to the table on it. Yeah, so important. So many of those points there, Sarah. Give us the give us the final words. You know, what's what are you hoping for? What and and also, you know, just uh, as I say, if any, if there is a sort of website or anything that anybody needs to go and link to, do let us know as well. Um, I think it's the best place would be the actual fintech lab website or or access from from the ashurst um, um lab they they have everything in there and all the latest news and announcements and of course they can reach out to us directly if, if needed uh, what i what i really like about this initiative is the fact that it's, it's fairly unique i don't think there has been a focus in the industry on green techs there is certainly a focus on fintechs there are plenty of labs in the market with a different perspective but there isn't one as such with a perspective that is solely looking at um, sustainability-led technologies and what they can do to make an impact and and support financially that journey. So, so I think that this is a great initiative and I think it's also important to see how the legal and the technology and consulting side get together to make it happen. There is an effort on the legal side that needs to be in place, but for that to be successful, you need to have the right data, the right uh, technologies and processes in place to be able to visualize that. And that requires, of course, a significant degree of a scale and support from, from, from partners with, with the ability to do so. so so we do welcome that uh, acceleration capacity that the Ashurst uh, fin uh, FinTech Lab brings, as well as the power of FinTechs together with our ability to effectively work as an orchestrator, orchestrator from a digital transformation perspective. So very exciting and, and really hope to see a lot of uh, great news uh, in, in, in the short term. Well, I, I think this is super important. And I think you said it all there, really, which is that there's I don't think there is a focus in any of the accelerators. I, I, it's a sort of a, a flavour in a few, but it's not a focus. Um, and we all know, you know, the, the great empowering uh, capacity that the accelerators had through the fintech market. And, and uh, we need it here. We need to move the, the game forward far more imperative uh, than than the, the fintech world. This is much more sort of life threatening. So, you know, I commend you for doing it. And I, I hope we can you know, dip back in and, and hear about progress and success and do all we can to help uh, all the great work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for now. And we'll speak again soon. Bye, everybody. Thanks for your time. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Bye. For now. Bye. Bye.